Alex, I want to start with one thing that sort of has been going around the Twitter sphere today, uh, and it's Lamar Jackson. Um, according to odds makers, Lamar is the favorite to land with the Patriots. Should he not? But no, 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 they, no. Other way around. The Patriots are the favorite to land Lamar. Yeah, did, did I did I flip that? Yeah, because that would be that would be different odds, right? Would be who's the favorite to be the Patriots' starting quarterback in Week One? Oh, sure, would be yeah, different yeah, odds, okay. yeah, sure. So, so, yes, Lamar favorite. The Patriots are the favorite to land Lamar. Um, I have a lot to say, a lot to get to on it, um, plenty of thoughts, but I know you're not as gung ho on it as I am. So I want to give the floor to you first to kind of talk about uh, this potential potential fit. I guess we can call it. Well, I mean, I'll just say what I what I say all the time with these things. Vegas loves taking money from stupid people. <laughs> and there's probably a lot of Patriots fans out there, some more realistic than others, but some who think that Lamar coming here is a real possibility. And they see those odds and they want to put 20 bucks on it so they can brag to their friends when Lamar does come here that they won money off of it. That's all this is. That's all this it's it's just not yeah, realistic. And, and here's how I know it's not realistic. Whether or not you think the Patriots have a chance, you can't tell me, based on the information we have in front of us, that the Dolphins aren't one of the most five likely teams. Yeah, if I was making those odds and like actually making them, not trying to rip people off, I don't I shouldn't say rip people off. It's it is what it is, but like right. the house always wins, right? It, the favorite right, can't exactly. win every time. So I'd put the Dolphins up there, certainly ahead of the Patriots. I, I don't remember who else they had there. And this was if he leaves the Ravens. Jets, it was, yeah, it's if, yeah, there's parameters. If, so there's if not even Ravens, Ravens odds on there. Right. And it's Patriots, Jets, Falcons, Raiders, 49ers was the top five in order. Falcons is sneaky interesting. I, yeah, I can I see agree. that. I didn't consider that one. The Niners are going to be up there. The Dolphins have to be up there. It just makes so much sense. He's talking yeah, about I don't know wanting why to go back are. to Miami. So right. I, I we you can enjoy it. You, you can enjoy that they're at the top of those odds. Have fun with that. But I I really I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I'd love to have him here. Like in a bubble, he's a great player, tremendous right. player, certainly an upgrade over Mac Jones. I'd take him here. I just I don't see the interest from his side. And I don't re- necessarily see the interest from the Patriots side because what it would take to get him, you basically have to expend all your assets in terms of right. draft capital in order to get him here because he's not he's not hitting for agency. He's not. The Ravens right. will tag him and trade him. Even if he says, I refuse to play in Baltimore, they will tag him and trade him. So there go all your draft assets. And then you have to sign him. So there goes all your cap space. So now who's blocking for him? Who's catching the football for him? You you need to overhaul that offensive line because you do not have offensive linemen that can run that scheme. It's I'm not necessarily saying I would I would say no if he was just like, hey, I want to go to the Patriots. But right. you're talking about a long, long path ahead. And for a coach that's trying to catch Don Shula and now has his successor, we think named in Gerard Mayo, that process isn't necessarily something he's going to want to go about. So, so let's I talk, just I, yeah. I don't think it's realistic. So let's talk about the offense for a second, though, and the pieces that are in place and the moves that would have to be made if you bring Lamar here. And I wrote all about this 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 afternoon on CLNSmedia.com, so you can check that whole thing out. But looking at it from where the Patriots are on offense, as far as personnel, as far as coaching staff, look, if you're going to make this splash, and I'm a Mac Jones fan, as you are. We're both, quote-unquote, Mac Jones bobos, and we we think he got screwed, and he deserves better. Uh, I'm with you on that. But... If you're going to bring Lamar Jackson in here and you have a chance to bring in a fringe top five quarterback, again, if he wants to come here, you have to make that move in the NFL right now. I just think you do. And look, pieces in place personnel-wise, the Patriots have, whether you, you know, they're rather expensive, but two tight ends in Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith. You have, if you re-sign Damian Harris on a team-friendly deal, three running backs in Stevenson, Harris, and Strong. And then you'd have Lamar Jackson to be able to run a similar system that they ran in Baltimore with Greg Roman. Two tight ends, three backs, big receivers, guys like big receivers and then fast receivers. So you have Devontae Parker, you have Tyquan Thornton, you have Kendrick Bourne. They could run a similar scheme. Now, if you're going to make this move, you have to decide on it now because you're looking for an offensive coordinator now as the Patriots reported last week. They're going to start 
interviewing offensive coordinators. Uh, like they, they mentioned starting this week. I don't know who they're going to bring in yet. They haven't reported it. There was a well, report so today they, that Tom Curran just yeah. – is that where you were going? Okay, so yeah, Tom yeah, Curran yeah. reported that uh, the primary target is former Patriots offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien. There's unanimity, is that how you say it, on all sides that O'Brien's the best person for the job. Uh, he goes on to say that he O'Brien has a willingness to return, and it would end up it would be called an, it should be an upset if he doesn't return. That tells me they're not going for Lamar because right. The, the O'Brien system, think about candidates, right? O'Brien and Chad O'Shea, those are guys that are going to run an offense that does not fit Lamar Jackson. But you look at other candidates, and I've sort of, again, I talked about this on CLNS, but I've been thinking about it all day now. Todd Monken, the OC at Georgia, used to be the OC with the Browns. The system he runs, or you look at Zach Robinson, the system he runs, that's something that can fit Lamar Jackson. You Again, you have the personnel here. But you look at the OCs, and you have to match those things right now. So that right. process should have to already start. I don't know if that has. But I can't get over the fact that, A, Monken runs that run first, easy on the quarterback, play action. He did it with Baker at Cleveland. He did it with Stetson Bennett and just won two titles at Georgia. I can't stop thinking about that. And then you look at Zach Robinson. That Shanahan system, you look across the league, you look at San Fran. They did it with Jimmy. They did it with – Nick Mullins, they're doing it right now with Brock Purdy. There's a high floor for the quarterback in that Shanahan system. We haven't seen the high ceiling that we think it has yet, right? You look at Trey Lance in San Francisco. We were kind of expecting to see that high ceiling with the mobile quarterback who can get the ball out quick. It's sort of just in, you know, in motion with guys like Purdy right now. If you get Lamar Jackson in that system, that's the high ceiling that we've all been waiting for it to happen. That is that is essentially what will happen, in my opinion, if you put Lamar in that system. I I mean it's a, it's a slightly different system though. It's not the Ravens system isn't really Shanahan. It's sort of its own. No, thing. but but I'm saying there, there's the talk of you know the that type of quarterback like Trey Lance. Right. So you put it, it would be a shift in a system, sure. But you put Trey Lance into that system like they wanted to in San Fran. You talk about Lamar Jackson going to Miami with Mike McDaniel. Oh yeah, Lamar Lamar Jackson has been rumored to San Francisco with Shanahan. So I'm just saying that type of quarterback in that type of system, that's what you would have to do here in New England. You would want to bring in one of those coaches. Right. And and, and Bill O'Brien, like you said, is not going to run that system. So I would say exactly. they don't. And, and and that's not to say they don't want Lamar. They may have made the call. And, 100%. you know, hey, you know, Lamar, they called Lamar's agent or how I don't know how it works with tampering. If there's a guy who wants a trade, right. but they go through their back channels. Hey, Lamar, you want to play here? Nope. Okay, exactly. And there you go. He's not an option. He's not whether they want him or not. He's not an option. So they have to continue to move on. Yeah. So let's then talk about the actual report. Something that does actually have wheels on it, and that's Bill O'Brien. What I just read, what I just mentioned, NBC Sports. Tom Curran says that um, again. They the Patriots believe there are other candidates with merit, but the relationship between ownership and Bill O'Brien and Mac Jones and Bill O'Brien. Sounds like it would be an upset should he not return. So it, I think it's he's all about the guy here. They're going to go through interviews, but I think it's going to ultimately – after current support today, I think it's going to be Bill O'Brien. Which, to me, I know some people rolling his eye, of course, it's always going to be Bill O'Brien. Yes, we just went through a whole offseason of them doing the thing that it was like it couldn't possibly be that. They couldn't possibly have Matt Patricia call offensive plays. Right. They couldn't possibly, you know, with the stuff in the draft, trade down twice and take a guard. They couldn't possibly just sit out free agency. They tried all that roundabout stuff and it didn't work. This is the off season of no duh. Like it was funny when I, I posted my 10 point plan for the Patriots off season yeah. on Friday and it's up now and you can read it at 98, five, the sports com. And I got a comment on it. That was, and this is, this was a rare case where I actually got into what I would do. It wasn't so much a projection as much as it is. Yeah. If they, I think if they do all these things, they'll be in good shape. And the first step was hire Bill O'Brien. And I got a comment that was like, you know, I was disappointed reading this. There really wasn't anything outside of the box. I think this is what everybody believes they should do. Isn't what everybody believes they should do sort of out of the box now? After what right. we went through last season, like per a chalk off season, hire Bill O'Brien, sign or trade for a receiver, draft a tackle. Like that's all chalk. 
Get rid but of it bad isn't. coaches, bring in good coaches. Right. That's <laughs> yeah. all chalk, but it also isn't after what we've went through, gone through in the last year. So, yeah, the fact that they're going to hire the right guy isn't an eye roll. It's great. Excellent. They're doing what they should do. They're making the unilateral correct move. And uh, that's not to say that going outside the box is always bad. Sometimes you take those risks and they hit. And, you know, that's absolutely the case. But they can't swing and miss this offseason. They just can't afford to do it. Bill can't afford to do it. This needs right. to be an offseason of the safe plays, the I don't want to say low floor or, or high, high floor. Sorry. This is the, the off season of high floor, low ceiling plays. Bill O'Brien. I don't want to say he's low ceiling because I really think he he's going to ma- He can maximize Mac Jones, but like, it's not flashy. It's not sexy. There's no, wow. Like this could really turn into something. It's just, yeah, he's probably the right guy for the job. Right. And so they're going to hire him to do that job. Like, yes. Excellent. Well done. Right. You even look at, and we'll, we'll, we can talk about Cliff Kingsbury's not going to be an option, but that was sort of a high ceiling move where not only is he going to, you know, look at what Mac Jones can do best, but he's going to elevate it even more with deep downfield concepts and, you know, kind of like you had mentioned before, alabama the Patriots right. offense. I think Bill O'Brien will do that, but Cliff Kingsbury would do that even more so. And I don't know if that's essentially what they need. They need to make their quarterback better and, you know, do the things that he's able to do high IQ intermediate throws, play action, read a defense, things like that. And that's exactly what O'Brien's going to do. So again, I think that that's ultimately going to be the move. And that's what it sounds like according to Karin. So 